Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. We're happy to have you all joining us here. We are Bethel Lutheran Church in Holbridge, Nebraska. I invite you to gather yourselves for worship now as we bring ourselves together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. Living God, you are our life, our hope, our strength. Grant that we who have not seen may have the faith to trust in you through all things, that we might receive the peace of Christ through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll begin our time of worship with our confession and hearing the sweet words of forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll hear our scripture readings. The first scripture reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 29 through 42. Peter and the apostles answered the high priest and the council, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill, him, kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thetis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean, rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice 
And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John from chapter 20. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We'll now join in singing our hymn today. Uh, it is hymn number 376, Thine is the Glory.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Usually, the uh, focus on this particular Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, is on Thomas, doubting Thomas, as we've come to know him. But I think it's interesting, right after telling us about Thomas's unwillingness to believe without seeing, John makes it perfectly clear why he wrote these things down. I've always wondered about the placement of this statement, why it's not at the very end of his gospel. Why is it stuck here, in between accounts of the disciples' encounters with the risen Christ? John explains that he has written down these stories and joyous news of Jesus' resurrection so that future readers and generations to come may read and come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The statement is placed here, immediately after a real and raw account with doubt. Doubt in the truth of the resurrection. And it's there for a very specific purpose. We are celebrating the good news that has been passed down through the generations. Therefore, it's kind of difficult for us to enter into the moments of fear and uncertainty in which John Chick places us. But in the darkness of that first day of the week, Mary, Peter, and the other disciples there, well, they're holed up in a locked room. They're afraid. This is after they have received the news of the resurrection. These are the people who had heard that the tomb was empty. These are the friends and followers of Jesus to whom Mary brought the message that she had actually met the risen Christ. She gives them Jesus' message. But what are they doing this night? They don't seem to be celebrating, do they? No. They've locked the door because they're afraid that the same thing that happened to Jesus would happen to them. And then Jesus came as a kind of an intruder. You noticed that, didn't you? He broke in. He doesn't knock so that the disciples will let him in. He just appears there, uninvited, essentially. And I think it's kind of interesting to wonder at this point, if Jesus had knocked, if he had asked to come in, would they have let him in? And I know your first reaction. Of course they'd let him in. They'd be overjoyed. But think about it. How many people, when Jesus comes knocking, just open the door and let him in? Most of the time, he barges in anyway. These disciples are locked up in a room they are afraid, even though they have been told that the Lord is alive. Obviously, they are too stunned to believe it. It's incomprehensible to them. This is a story that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's unbelievable. Jesus is alive. But you see, the disciples didn't really know and understand that, not quite yet. There was an element of doubt there. That element of doubt is always there at the beginning. Easter dawned on them very gradually. It didn't come all at once in a blinding flash of light. And of course, we remember the story of Thomas, who won't believe it until he sees it with his own eyes. 
Thomas is no different than the rest of them. They didn't recognize him or rejoice until Jesus showed them his hands and his side. So we shouldn't chastise Thomas for later asking for the same thing that they got. To Thomas, they brought words of joy. He demanded what they had experienced to see the wounded hands and the pierced side of Jesus. And after all of this, Jesus says something very interesting to Thomas that I think he meant for the rest of us, for those of us who stand where Thomas stood so many years ago. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. My friends, Jesus is not going to do for us what he did for Thomas seven days after the first Easter. He's not going to appear among us bodily and tangibly, at least not yet. So if you and I are going to believe, we will have to do so without seeing. And that, I think, is why John includes this statement about how these things are written down so that you may believe. And my question is, and maybe it's yours, is, well, how? How are we going to believe? If we are not going to see Jesus with our own eyes and hear him with our own ears, is there any evidence on which we can base our faith? What are the signs of the resurrection? Well, in addition to the overwhelming scriptural witness to the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, I'm going to offer to you today the following evidence. One week ago, every church in this nation celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a different way. Hardly anybody was gathered with other believers in the church. But Easter came, and the internet was full of the proclamation of the gospel. I stood outside this church a week ago, listening to our church bell <laughs> ringing out the news. And it was joined by other church bells in the city People drove by, honking their horns, yelling out of their car windows. He is risen. A little old lady across the street leaned out her front door because it was windy and it was cold. And she had a little handbell that she was tinkling outside of the door, ringing out the news. Somebody was shooting off fireworks. And then I got home and I saw a video on Facebook, a little boy named Cooper. And his mom recorded him standing out on his back steps, banging a pan on a metal railing, shouting, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. Social distancing, it couldn't stop the resurrection from being proclaimed. We were separated physically, and yet we were still connected by the word. Here's more evidence. I call to mind the faces and the faithfulness of the people in the church I serve. When musicians and others gather on a weeknight to lead and lift us up in praise, to God, that is a sign of the resurrection. When a quiet word of witness is spoken and when followers of Jesus pray for peace, I see signs of the resurrection. When a man or a woman, tired from the week's labors, 
stays up late on a Saturday night to prepare a Sunday school lesson and comes early on Sunday to welcome those who will hear it taught. When children hear words of blessing and affirmation spoken to them by adults who didn't have to care, but chose to do so. When people take time to make quilts, prayer shawls, and when notes are written to the lonely and the fearful, promising prayers and support, I see evidence of Easter. When people laugh and cry together over the joys and the disappointments of life, when problems are faced honestly and hopefully, when grace and mercy, not condemnation and harshness, when that governs our relationships, and when the church opens its doors and its hearts to whoever comes yearning for the love of God, excluding no one, I am convinced that Jesus Christ is alive. I see it happen. And the wonder of it, it takes my breath away. Jesus embraces the world with the arms of his followers, our arms. He speaks words of grace with our voices. He offers peace through our deeds of witness and compassion. Over and over and over again, by God's great grace, the simple and ordinary practices of the church are the means by which Jesus becomes real to everybody, to the world. They are the sights and sounds of Christ, present to us in his body, his church. They are evidence for the truth of Easter, signs of the resurrection, and they are ways that we can touch, touch and trust Jesus. John says these are written so that you may believe. All of these things are written and done and spoken so that you may believe. The words continue to be written and spoken and lived out so that we all may believe. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we pray that our worship glorify you through our singing, our prayers, and the proclamation of your holy word. Help us hear what the Spirit is saying to us this Easter season and guard our hearts against complacency and worldly goals so that we may intentionally focus on your will to make disciples of all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of all creation, in many parts of your world, the creation has begun its annual process of rebirth. As shoots sprout forth from the earth and trees put forth their buds, help us to see in these everyday miracles a hint of the promised glory of our own resurrection through your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer healer of our every ill. In every corner of the world, your children suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Many lack the basic necessities for life, clean water, nutritious food, adequate shelter. Others find themselves overcome with fear and despair, while still others face the challenges of medical concerns. Empower your church to be sources of healing and wholeness and voices of hope. Grant your healing power in the lives of those who are in need, including Dave Wells, Graham Henning, Cheryl Ort, Ivan Samuelson, Cindy Carlson, Lynn Hasselquist, Richard Anderson, Ruth Lee, Lodima Ivy, and all others we name before you now. Bless those who provide care for the sick and dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the guiding force of all who trust in you. We remember and pray for all of those who stand in harm's way on behalf of others, especially our police officers, firefighters, EMTs, first responders, and members of our military. Guide, protect, and strengthen them in their serving, and bless their families as they share their loved ones with our society. On this day, we pray for Jared Kness, Joseph Anderson, Casey Schaff, Kyle Peterson, Jason Skalberg, Zach Sickles, and all others we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, teach us to recognize the priceless treasures of grace and reconciliation you have given us in your son, Jesus, and then to be bold and generous in offering that same grace to those who may have hurt us. In a world divided on so many fronts, may your spirit lead us to be agents of reconciliation and peace. Show us opportunities each day to join you in your mission to spread the gospel. All these things and everything else that is on our hearts, we commend to your great mercy in the holy name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and share the gospel. Thanks be to God.